Warning, graphic pest control video ahead. Do not watch if you might be offended. If, however, you really like watching pest control videos, then hello again and welcome to the Squirrel Hunter channel. Please continue and watch us as we control pest populations with silenced air rifles here in the UK. If you have any questions, can you please check the description below first to see if it's already been answered and for some useful links. Thank you. I'd like to answer a few questions in the beginning of this video that we get asked a lot. The primary reason for shooting squirrels is they are regarded as pests here in the UK and not the game animal that they are in the US. There are links in the description explaining why that is so. I get to read a lot of comments on our vids and many ask, what do you do with the bodies afterwards? Do you even eat them? And such like. In the early days, the local scavengers like foxes and badgers used to get them. But these days we try to utilise them because they are a resource as well as an undesirable pest. We have eaten them ourselves, but for the last few years we've been supplying scouts for them to eat. If you've watched all of our vids, you have seen a scout group in one doing just that. We now have another group who are a lot closer to us wanting them now. So the first part of this video has some footage sent to me by a good friend who runs the local scout group that goes the whole hog and skins and cooks them as part of their meetings. The children really enjoy learning how to process an animal for food. It's all too easy to see meat and not connect it to the once living creature that it came from, especially when it's wrapped in cellophane from the supermarket. They have survival skills activity badge that this helps them with, which I've supplied a link in the description to if you want to read what they have to do for it in total. I was supplied an awful lot of video by them. I've chopped it down just to give you an idea what they get up to. You can see on this table lots of bits of squirrel meat. This was intended for my squirrel sausage project, but I figured their need was greater. Cornflakes and. Yeah. Oh, you need to share with the leader. Is this a squirrel? Yeah. Cornflakes and squirrel. It's called popcorn squirrel. Oh, cool. Top quality combination. Who came up with that? That's a good question from the young scout. They're using a recipe that comes from Rob Collins, the old hedge creeper. Andy from Andy's Range, the first guest this year, has done an excellent video on how to do it. The link will be in the description to that. It's actually Southern Fried Popcorn Squirrel. I purchased both books directly from Rob, one of the game fairs. He uses these recipes and these books to generate money to continue to run his charity called Pass It On Young Sports himself and some of his friends. Their mission statement on their website says Pass It On is a volunteer non-profit making organisation that are passionate about getting both young and not so young people into the countryside via exposure to various countryside pursuits. If you feel you'd like to contribute then please visit their website. You can purchase the books from there whether you do it because you want to contribute or whether you just want to have some really good recipes for game it's up to you but hopefully if you do buy them you'll enjoy your cooking just as much as these scouts have right then you've seen where the squirrels end up let's see where they come from they were originally running around in these woods doing all sorts of damage causing problems crossing the field into the farm where Brev shoots so he's got this feed on the edge of this big wood which I've said before in previous videos doesn't belong to him but he has now got permission to retrieve any squirrels that drop over there or even shoot a few if he can see them from the hide he's in if they won't come to the feeder because the owners of the wood don't like them either when they realised what he was doing they were very happy indeed doing more of that around this one's come in and he's being filmed on the ATN shot track camera attached to his rifle which rifle you may ask, I do believe this might be the Calibre Cricket 177 or it could be the Falcon FM12 or the Air Arms S410 he has three sub-12 foot pound rifles I think that might be the Calibre Cricket let me shoot in GSB exact heavies just waiting for it to sit up to take the shot now he's cocked it and the shot's good No problem there. You can tell with the body's reaction. The shot was a good one. A few twitches as per usual. And 
no need for a second shot. There's a hen pheasant, you just about make it out. It's come down to pick up the loose grain, spilt by the squirrels. It's in no danger whatsoever. Rev has no intention of shooting it, he's just going to film it. It's always good to have extra wildlife around. It takes away the boredom of waiting for squirrels and also gives the illusion that the feed is a safe area. That's what we think anyway. You usually tend to see a lot more coppers and hens, and certainly in the breeding season when they've all grouped up. And they usually got a cockbird with a harem. They usually come in first, check the area out, and then he calls his girls over and then stands guard while they feed. Very gentlemanly of them. And that squirrel caught brother unawares, just about got the ATN on it, and it's jumped off the post and ran off into the wood. And if it does sit still over there, he can shoot it, he has permission not to go wandering around shooting in there. When the owners realised that he was shooting squirrels on this side, they gave him a big thumbs up and told him he could go over there to retrieve any bodies that dropped, or shoot them if he saw them sat still in a tree, because they want them gone as well. Again, this one's come in to feed. Caught brother unawares. He's on the feeder before he could even get the camera on. Maybe he's on his mobile phone, I don't know. I've been caught like that a few times lately. Get on Facebook. Modern technology. Takes a little bit away from hunting, I think, sometimes. But this isn't really hunting, it's pest control. It'd be handy if he'd cocked his rifle. But he has now. He's just waiting for it to sit up so he can take a shot. No wrong with that. Second squirrel on the deck. You can see it quite clearly. It's a handy time this time of year. Not so much vegetation on the ground. Very clear view. And here we have squirrel number three. Sat up nicely on the feeder. And brother lines up on it to take the shot. They hit it in their head. And they very often grip on like that. The way the tail's flashing around. He's looking at it to give it a second shot. I think it was probably okay, just a bit of nerves. It gives it a second shot anyway, just be on the safe side. And that was three squirrels for that session. Here's Brev again on another session. He's already picked up the squirrel on the feeder, just steadies himself. Looks at the head movement, ready to take the shot. And again, this one hangs like the last one did. You see there's no tail movement. Just spasmed and gripped aside. It drops off to the floor. That's a one squirrel session. See that circle there? The red dot. That's Brev taking his test shot. Would urge everybody who's going to go out hunting pests and air rifle to do the same. And then you get results like that. Time and time again. Got to check the rifles on. As anyone who does enough shooting would know all sorts of things can happen, like the gun can get knocked and the zero can be affected. Gives you great confidence when you know the gun's on. You take those shots and kill cleanly. You just use his shot track, film a cockroach at the end of the field. And again, this is a session where he only has one. This is the last session I have on film for him at the moment. The squirrels been pushed off the feeder there. He's watching it go down that stick onto the woodland floor. And you can see what's pushed it. There's another squirrel come down onto the fence in the middle of the screen now. It's making its way towards the feeder. At this point I'd be thinking the same as Bruv. But that one's the dominant one. It's just pushed the other one off. It's going to come into feed. And it's going to get shot in a minute. But this one has other ideas. Seems intent on following the first squirrel. Maybe it's a male following a female, I don't know. But off they go. You just gotta wait for one to come into feed. This one looks like a candidate for that. Straight around the front, no messing. And it's sat up nicely. And Brev will be tracking about now, ready to take the shot. And you hear the pellet go straight through his head. And whack into the feeder. There's another one that hangs a fraction before dropping. 
no tail flicking as it did it, no head movement. I'm pretty sure the headshot's good. You can see the nettles are starting to grow. You know, big advantage of sitting in a hide is other wildlife can't see you as well. This beautiful roebuck wanders down the wood and it's in absolutely no danger from bruv. He's as pleased as I would have been to sit there and watch it. You can see it's completely unaware. See the bluebells on the floor. I'll give you the time of year if you haven't seen the date. Lovely healthy looking animal. Just having a bit of a mooch about. At that point it looked like he'd look his friend at bruv. He has no idea he's there. A good sniff about. Got quite a bit of footage of this one. I've just shared a little bit with you. There's a little rub of his horns in a minute. Not sure if that's scent marking or taking velvet off or a bit of both. There we go. Lovely to see. And Brev was pretty made up when he showed me the footage. Beautiful animal. It's quite a lot in that wood. They do have a deer management program there. This one wanders off blissfully unaware. This one is unaware as well. But it's an actual mortal danger because Brev's seen it. The camera's on it. I'm just going to gauge it. Head movement now. Try and work out how calm it is. Very often they'll get in a rhythm, they'll drop their head. You can virtually count the seconds when the head will pop back into the crosshairs again. Knocked it straight down. A bit of a kick about. And that was over and done with. And there's one on top of the feeder there. I've just ringed it for you. Sat nice and still. An inevitable headshot follows. Another squirrel on the deck. This is the end of the footage that Brev supplied me with. All short sessions, but when this feeder gets a bit better, more established, hopefully we'll get more. Over to Bro now. Their arms S410 and 2.2 caliber. Shooting the Webby Power Pels at sub 12 foot pounds. Nice early January session for Bro. You can just about make it a squirrel on a feeder. Bro can see it, but he can't shoot it because the crosshairs just won't show up. So he has to sit there knowing there's a squirrel on a feeder. He's got no night vision gear or illuminated reticle on the Simmons Whitetail Classic scope. It's a bit better. You can see it now and you hear the beep of the camera come on. With this camera on the back of the scope, so you'll see the picture in a bit. What happens next? The squirrel set up feeded nicely. So bro lines up on it, ready to take the shot. Just about make out. The shot's good. Little lame leap. Little twitch even. It's down on the floor. You can see this a lot better with his eyes. It's the trouble with these cameras. Got no night vision capability. You can see the weight of the belly on the floor. That pretty much tells the story. Nice head shot that bro. This is the video footage. Preceded it. You see, it's a bit of a struggle to see them crosshairs sometimes, especially in the darkness behind. If you're going to do this type of shooting, illuminated reticles are very useful, or even some sort of night vision scope like the Sniper Cam or the NS50. You can see the squirrel's head, you can see it well enough against the crosshair, and there we have a squirrel on its back on the floor. See more movement. It's a horrible day. Cold, wet. But the squirrels still have to feed. So don't automatically think they're going to stop in. They haven't got a fridge or a larder. They've got to come out to feed. Quick inspection of the one on the floor. Never ceases to amaze me. I didn't twig something's wrong. But a few recent years, 
seem to have been panicked by the ones on the floor. On well, occasion, we have picked them up. This location does never seem to be a problem. We just got to let them get it out of their system. They'd investigate the one that's dead before they decide to go up for feed. We've seen this behaviour countless times before. Bro's not even going for his rifle. Just watching the squirrel. Probably looking at the camera screen and looking over the top. If it does go still at any point, he'll get shot. Seems to be messing about an awful lot down there. There we go. It's more like it. What bro will do now? Let go of the camera, go for the rifle. He's got the camera on it. You hear the beep come on as the record goes. Let's go over to the right hand side of the feeder. And back to the floor again, rather annoyingly. So he has got the rifle up now, and he's watching it. Just to make it out at the bottom of the screen. Don't know why he's decided to go back down there again. What's so interesting about the one on the floor? At this point, I thought Bro might fancy a shot on the floor. He'll have his rifle up by now, and he'd be definitely tracking it. It seems to be making its way back up for a feed. Rather annoyingly. Still, you have to let them get it out of their system. Quick readjustment of the camera. You can see the fire axe silencer poking out. Getting ready for the shot. He's just judging his head movement, ready for the shot. An excellent shot it was. Straight to the ground. You can see the body shutting down. I was expecting it to have a little bit of a kick afterwards. It's usually a pause. Sometimes you get this reaction, or well, you get no reaction. Unfortunately, the scope cam footage is corrupt, so I can only show you this view. The two on the deck, not bad going on a horrible day. So we move swiftly onwards, and this one's come galloping in and got straight on the feeder, and the rain comes down. Then we go another one on the floor, There's two in the area, and the one across the floor is forcing them up the tree. That's what we like to see. Target rich environment. Probably have a run around now. Try and work out who's the boss. That one's legging it off to the right. Doesn't always go to plan. We we'll put the scope cam on just in time. This one to run back up the stick we put there. If it sits still long enough, it's going to get shot. But it doesn't plan on getting shot by the look of it. It's going to go up on top of the feeder and generally mess about. See, they're both playing hide and seek almost. Watch the right of that tree. I don't know what happened there. Certainly wasn't shot. I think that's probably the clumsiest squirrel in the world. Don't know why it fell off. There's certainly no shot from Bro. It's recovered itself. That's if that is the same one. Probably an occupational hazard for a tree living creature. Sometimes you fail. Just be watching, trying to get an opportunity for a shot. The one on the floor seems to be intently examining the first squirrel that was shot. I'm pretty sure Bro will be looking to shoot it there if it sits still. Just like that. It was preoccupied doing something, and Bro got a nice shot at the top of his head. It's all over for Mr. Squirrel. A few lame kicks. Let's have a look at the scope cam view. Again, the cross is quite dark in certain areas. You can see the head quite clearly. As long as you can see that cross there on the target. 
until the rain picked up its intensity. There we go. What was that squirrel doing? Probably was looking at the top of his rifle on there. He's deciding on taking the shot. Oh dear. It's not very nice, is it? I shan't be doing that anymore. Don't always have to catch them feeding. Good solid headshot. Another squirrel bites the dust. This is the other squirrel we think has come back. It's examined its friend or enemy or whatever it was. Let's run up the tree. It's rather annoying. Not sure what spooked it. It's hard to tell from this bit of video, but I do suspect there may be another squirrel there. Distinct possibility. They seem to know when another one's there, way before you do. Whether they can smell them, hear them, see them. Telltale signs, maybe they make noises we can't hear, I don't know. They seem to know when there's another squirrel nearby, long before you'll ever see them. And their reaction should give it away. See the fire axons are waving around. Bro starts to track it. It's sitting on the side of that feeder quite nicely. It turns round. That could be a good shot. It's going down to the ground. Got a bit of a sniff again. That last squirrel. It's not always easy shooting squirrels. We tend to show you the days out when we've had the best results. You can see from Bruv's efforts on the first part of this video, ones, twos and threes, quite common. And also very common to come out and sit there for three or four or five hours and not even see a squirrel, let alone shoot one. So Bro's here on three, looking to make it number four. So it's not a bad day out, even though it's not as good as some of the big days we've had. Looks like it's finally become still, so Bro lines up on it, ready for the shot. And drops it straight to the ground. This is where the patience comes in. No point shooting too soon. And missing or wounding. Four on the deck. Here's a scope cone view. Cut this one down quite a bit. You see the crosshair is only just about visible. But it's plenty good enough and you can get them lit up like that quite easily make it the point of impact you want pick out the brain just got to get it nice and still and those figures tense enough on the trigger now that'll do straight up the eyebrow into the brain job done so you've got four on the deck and he's had enough now the veins are baited a bit come out to inspect the kills. All good shots. Horrible weather. We'll see if I some borrowed the rat videos from the early part of the year. This was quite bad weather. Although it's not torrential rain, there's a lot of it. And the grains become sodden. All gushing away down this track. There's a stream at the bottom of that hill. Probably find its way down there at some point. Not nice though. Just goes to show, even though the weather's bad, the squirrels got to eat. So with four squirrels on the deck for the day, it wasn't a bumper rating, but it was better than none. I hope you can appreciate from Brev and Bro's footage that success is more to do with effort and time put in than luck. Also, some of the worst days can be worth the trips to the woods. We're just fortunate when you live in the UK and you're blessed with so much limited sunshine. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe and share. Thank you.